morning. This morning we have a video about an older piece of equipment. Uh, this is a Fluke 27 FM digital multimeter. This thing was made uh, sometime in the mid to late 80s. In fact, on the back here, you can see that it the warranty expired in 1989. And kind of doing this video because this is for as old as it is, this is a very good digital multimeter. It's very rugged. This is the military version of the Fluke 27. And that means that this has been made to be water resistant and it's built to be a lot more rugged so that 18 year old goofballs who uh, don't know how to take care of equipment have a harder time breaking it. So this thing is just basically built like a tank. Uh, before I get started, let's uh, pull up. These are specifications for... These are specifications for the Fluke 27. We'll get to the FM version here in a second. So if you want to look at the uh, freeze frame or read any of this, you can. So these are the specifications for the 27FM. Uh, one of the major differences for between a Fluke 27 and a Fluke 27 FM is, uh, based on all the information I can find, the Fluke 27 FM is a true RMS multimeter. The 27 is not. Uh, the 27 is, uh, what do they call it, averaging. And this thing has, oh wow, this still has a U.S. Air Force, oh, so this was with the Air Force. There's a number etched into the side. Uh, this thing has a fold-out leg so you can set it up as it like a bench multimeter. Um, See if we can quickly open this up. This thing takes a 9 volt battery and it has two fuses in it. The fuses are very expensive. Um, so you can see that. This is where the fuses are. Uh, these are cheap Chinesium versions of the fuse. I so they who knows if they're 
completely accurate or good. This thing takes a 9 volt battery which is held in place by this holder. Makes it very easy to put it in and out without destroying it. Once again, so that uh, your 18 year old ham-handed, ham-fisted kid doesn't destroy this. You can, as you can see, though, it's been opened up a lot, and the screws are a little worn. Uh, this piece here is removable. The meter is, cal you can calibrate it. Can't remember if this had a calibration sticker on it when I got it. I don't think it did. Um, I bought this at a antique radio swap meet. I paid $40 for it. And the guy who's selling it uh, tried to sell me a second one for forty for another forty dollars, and I just I didn't need it. I mean, I've already got I don't know half a dozen multimeters of some form or another. So the display is a liquid crystal display, and that missing digit when it first came on is normal. Uh, when I got this, some of the uh, digits were a little faded. And the thing with a, a liquid crystal display is that uh, you don't want to leave a liquid crystal display out in the heat or in the cold. Now, I when I first found out about these, uh, I was watching uh, B. Anderson TV. He has one. Shango 066 has one. Shango's is uh, his display is badly faded. Uh, I think it's because he keeps it out in outside where it gets cold. Uh, mine actually improved when I, I put it back inside and I just n always keep it inside and because of that it seems to have gotten better. It can uh, it can do AC or DC uh, 1000 volts. It can measure 10 amps 10 amps max on this, 320 milliamps max on this one, although I think the fuse is actually uh, higher than that. Uh, it will measure AC, DC, millivolts, milliamps, uh, I think it will do microamps, and resistance and it has a continuity of course diode check two different off one here one here hold min max relative and a manual range um, like I said I've I've had this for three or four years now. Well, let's see. I'm not sure when I got it. But yeah, at least probably five years. And it has worked flawlessly. Uh, when I've tested it using a high accuracy, at least the multimeter, I'm sorry, the uh, ohm meter with a high accuracy resistor it measures exactly what the resistor says uh, when I've compared the voltages to another similar quali quality 
voltmeter uh, accuracy is pretty damn close. I don't know which one would be more accurate because I don't have anything that's been calibrated. But um, anyways, oh, uh, so you can get these on, like I said, you can get them at ham radio f festivals, antique radio shows. You can find them on eBay currently. Prices are all over the place. They range from, I think the, I looked at the sold listings. There was one that sold for $45 not working. And the average price seems to be about $60 to $70. Shipping seems to be, for some reason, ridiculously high. I think people are gouging on the shipping a little bit. The, uh, when this thing came, came new from the Army, it came in a case, it had a battery, it had, I think, a couple of spare fuses, the uh, test leads, a high voltage test lead, and uh, manual, I think that was about it. So. Uh, if you can find one complete with the high voltage test leads, then uh, it'll, I think it'll measure up to 3,000 volts. Maybe higher, I'm not sure. I haven't seen the high voltage test leads to know exactly how they work. Uh, the, I'll post a link in the description for our Dropbox for the military manual for this. I had a heck of a time finding it because I had to first I had to figure out what the military designation for this was. Uh, once I found that then I I found the proper manual for it. The, the 27 manual will mostly work. It's just that uh, like I said this is through RMS. And I think I, I think that's about it. Um, this is, I mean, highly accurate, great for hobbyists, rugged, you can drop it off a ladder and it probably won't break unless it lands on the glass. Um, anyways, that's it. Thanks for watching.